Hey guys, this is our first video blog for the website, and as you may have guessed, I'm Kelly Hogan. This is my husband James, who edits the blog and sometimes responds to your questions when you ask because I'm really slack about it. It's me! Yes, that's him. Um, so I've been asked a lot of questions through the years about you, frankly. Yeah. Um, I get asked often, is your husband zero carb? Yeah. And, um... The answer to that is... No. 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 He's not. Not even close. Mm -mm. Not even like 10 carbs. No. He obviously knows a lot. He's he's read the blog. I he do helped. so at my own peril. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Yeah. If you had any major <laughs> health concerns, would you consider going more zero carb? I would consider it. But you really but... like ice cream. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. He knows. I'm sorry. And Nothing honestly, personal at all. so I know I've told my story at like to nauseam. I'm sorry, but I'm going to just very quickly say that growing up, I did have a weight problem, but you did not. And no, I, I had like the reverse. Yeah. He was a really scrawny little white boy. Thank you. And basically, I knew him when he was still a scrawny little white boy. So we've been together a very long time. Yeah. He He didn't meet me. When I looked like this, honestly, I was you, no, well. I was sixteen you when were we 16. met. Sixteen, yes, yeah, so and you I were was a child. pretty cute. And I was a child too. He just was... for the record, please don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> he was even more of a child. He was only fourteen when we That's first right. met. Um, I was not a zero carber at the time, but no, I did. But who was? Like that was high school. It was high school. You and ate like lettuce. I ate very little in and high school. Rice. Very little because not even cooked rice. I mm -hmm. I had been a really heavy kid and I tried very hard to fix that in high school mm. and I, I kind of did by the time we met I was I was pretty average size um I liked you thank you yeah so by the time we went to college though I gained a lot of weight and when we got married so did I, I stopped was, being a skinny, skinny white boy he did I bet you've been a very average sized man <laughs> when we married I was a size 22, okay, 24. Um, that was my wedding dress. And I eventually ended up... Hang on. Uh -huh. um, you can't call me an average size man. You're, I mean... <laughs> I didn't mean that weird. When I drop my glasses, I got a big smudge on them. Oh. Eventually, while we were married, I weighed 260-something pounds. Okay. And the other day, I got a comment on one of my YouTube videos that said your husband should be ashamed for marrying someone that at that point was so lazy and had no self-control and who was so gluttonous. Thoughts? Because I'm going to go ahead and tell you I really wasn't. People assume that everybody that's overweight is a slob who's just laying on the couch doing nothing but eating all day. But that was still me, and he knows. Okay, look. I don't. I don't think that this looks like a slob or a glutton. We're happy. We were happy. We were very happy. It was fine. Yeah, we we're happy, and he probably loved me for more I than just what I dare ate. you to make that comment on the blog. I will delete that comment. He will, cause that's what my job. That's is. the guy. Yeah, I don't. I do. He approves or disapproves. Yeah. So, you don't remember me being a lazy... No, no. Glutton. Like... I really, even back then, you probably remember it. I would try to exercise. I would try to eat right. I ate a lot of fat-free cereal. I ate you a lot of cereal. You always trying. You, you always really trying. And failing. And getting bigger. That's what happened. Well. That happened. But you were trying. I was trying. So then... I started getting all these staph infections, and James does not actually remember a lot about it, but I think it's because he tried to block all that sexiness. My therapist <laughs> said it was best if I didn't remember. But I remember one time we were, I was with your family on the first big family vacation. We were very young newlyweds. This is my new wife. And I would she have... has a deadly disease. <laughs> I would have to excuse myself on occasion to go, like, pack and unpack. It was a, a place on my... Left knee. Yeah, please point to your knee like you were. <laughs> and um, I still have a small scar there. And I would have to go pack this wound that I'd had lanced. It was horrible. 
Yeah. I remember, remember being kind of mortified, but you actually don't really remember that. Where's this going? I mean, it's going good places eventually. Okay. Okay. So, to set the scene, that's what was happening in my life. When my doctor said, you need to cut out carbs. Ah, uh, yes. And I went very, very low carb for five years, and I was extremely hungry. And what James remembers the most about that five years was all of the... Jello. Jello. Green beans. Uh... Jello. I would breast. open up the refrigerator and there would be gallon sized tubs full of jello. Yes. And then there would be more jello. <laughs> and while you were eating that jello, you would be making more jello. And eventually, like. All sugar free, though. It said zero carbs. So I was like, sweet. I can have as much as I want. And in fact, I was actually getting quite skinny while I was eating all of this jello and your, working yeah. out relentlessly. You know, your hair looked great. It was the it was <laughs> my hopes. your your nails were very strong. Thank you. I was concerned about like the dye. <laughs> it was so much dye. It Chemicals. was so much dye. It, the sink was starting to turn like shades of red and blue. Yes. The but reason was, I ate so much jello was I was starving. I wasn't eating hardly any fat at all. Were, I thought I had to restrict calories. I was finally getting very slim, as a matter of fact, but I was working a lot. just water. It was jiggly, jiggly And it kept water. me feeling full, and it met some craving for the sweets, and yet it had zero carbs, so I thought I was doing right. I, and, and the green beans, like frying pans full of green beans. It wasn't that much green beans. It was, green, it was a lot of green beans. It was one of the only vegetables that I really thought of as low carb. Yeah. It's what I did. It so, was, after it was five years of this madness, I discovered zeroing in on health and my dear friend now, Charles Washington, and these group of, this massive group of people who had before and after pictures showing that they'd been eating only meat for some of them a few years. I thought, great, now she's found a new camp of weirdos. <laughs> it was a new camp of weirdos. I didn't even have a camp before. I was just kind of doing what my doctor said. The Jello exercise camp. That was all me. There was no camp. It was lonely. I thought there were others. There was just me. But with the zeroing in on health, I had people. I found my people, and they looked good, and they were eating meat, but not lean meat. They were eating steaks and burgers and bacon. And, and this was also kind of like the time when the whole Atkins thing was like really popular. So like that kind of... Well, that's how I sort of found them, is I wanted to know. Atkins said that you should climb the carb ladder, so once you've lost your weight, you could start climbing. It's like a ladder made out of pasta. <laughs> yes. Or away from the pasta. I it was know. kind of made of the pasta. Sorry. Like you could, the more weight you lost, the more higher you could go, you could have more carbs. Yeah. But when I would try to eat the carbs, I could you see my weight going right back to where it was. And down I, those little rungs of macaroni. I went down the rungs and I thought, what if you just got off the ladder? So I Googled, do you have to eat carbs? Yeah. And that's when I found out about my weirdos. And they had, some, some of them had hundreds of pages of journals. They and were remember, very emo. <laughs> some of them were. And I became very emo because when I first started Zero Carb, I did not, in fact, have immediate results. Other than I did feel better. Um, and I stopped going to the gym. Do you remember that? I stopped. I was like, I can't go to the gym. I, I do remember that because suddenly I had to deal with you for hours. I was in kind a day, of. A, and I, I didn't really know quite yeah. what to do. It was like having a puppy that had to run outside. <laughs> And he's a very moderation is key kind of guy. Yeah, you were chewing the furniture. So I went from being at the gym way, way, way too much to then I was never there at all. And I think you were kind of like, maybe you could just go for a normal person amount of time and eat a normal person amount of carbs and just be a normal person. Well, your friends, like from the elliptical machines, were calling and they were wondering what had happened. They were deeply concerned. They probably were. One cent flowers. <laughs> That was nice. It was nice. <clears throat> I think he had a crush on you, though. Anyway, <clears throat> I uh, but I do remember it, and I remember thinking like this is this is going from one extreme of Jello to another extreme of exercise to now this other extreme of just eating fatty beef. And I just kept thinking, how long can this last? There's just it doesn't seem. How long has this lasted? Well, it's. Ten years. It lasted a long time. Ten years of the fatty bee phase. Yeah, but, you know, it does seem to be a pretty difficult thing to just eat little burger patties. Do I make it look difficult? 
Do I ever sit and bemoan like <sighs> burger patties again? <laughs> Never, right? Like when I bring in the tray in the plate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> burger patties again. Oh. No, I'm always very, when I'm hungry. When I'm hungry, I love them every time. Right. Every time. Yes. What would you think if all of a sudden, let's say next week, I just gave it up and I started eating vegetables and then started eating fruit and started eating, would you be relieved or terrified if you ate fruit with the gusto that you eat meat <laughs> i'd have to get more clothes again it would be it, well i just don't know how it would work or vegetables I we mean, couldn't you know, afford me to eat this much fruit anyway i mean i don't think there's enough hours in the day for you to eat that many vegetables mm -mm, i'd just be ch -ch -ch -ch, i have to get like a slicer mm. i have a huge appetite and mm. i always have and i used to try to really hold that back as you know, I would be like, no, I really should stop. But now, I don't really hold back. I just, I eat a lot of, it's like he has a pet T-Rex. I eat a lot of meat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. With longer arms. You can hug me. <laughs> yes, a T-Rex that can give you a hug. Yeah. But I, I still do have a large appetite. I still don't work out, though I don't feel like I'm super sedentary in my life. I do get asked that a lot, too. And you could... Like rock? You know what? Oh, that's no, sedimentary. <laughs> yeah, not sedimentary. Here's a comment. Let's see what you think of this. Um, one week ago, somebody wrote as a response to my Judy Sh Judy Cho interview, which I love her. Check it out. You should check it out. Um, they wrote, this is from Babs. What a crock. Nobody. <laughs> Babs. What a crock. Nobody lives long or healthy eating only meat. You guys are lying. I've been very sneaky if I'm lying, right? You haven't seen me eat anything else for 10 years. Well, no. No. Also, what kind of a weird lie would that be? If all of a sudden I decide I'm just going to tell the world I only eat meat when I'm eating other things and I'm going to tell them I'm healthy when I'm really not and I'm going to make up all this blood work and post it on a blog to see who checks that out. Isn't that a weird lie to you? You guys are lying. We don't have to go into conspiracy theories, but <laughs> like that would be a really weird, it's a weird lie. lie. I mean, maybe if you were a majority owner in McDonald's stock, but we're not. We're not. We're in the basement here. And How many books out. have I sold from this? I'm gonna be like, why would I do this? I'm not I'm not selling anything. Literally nothing. Yeah. I wish you would actually. Yeah, he does. He tried to put a store on the website to I sell tried. some water bottles, but thanks to both of you for buying those. <laughs> yeah, I think we sold two in the past five years. We took it down because uh, but, because then I couldn't say the phrase, I'm not selling anything if I was actually trying to sell something. But I do think that it's worth pointing out that if you were to go back and start eating vegetables and fruit with the discipline that you're eating just meat, there could be a shot. Because See? here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. Um, being the opposite of a sloth, you are incredibly disciplined, incredibly focused, incredibly tough on yourself. And if you approached eating navel oranges and grapes the same way, and that's all you ate. I don't know how you would live. You would turn into a grapefruit or something. But maybe. See, here's the problem. This is what he's never really lived that I lived and he doesn't fully get yet. I'm sorry, but not yet. I don't really have that much discipline. If I'm hungry, I'm going to eat something. And I'm going to feel full. And I, the discipline... It looks like I have discipline when I really, that's the funniest thing about this, is I don't. As long as I'm just eating meat, I don't feel restricted. Whereas before, it was this constant game of please walk away from the food, walk away, you're eating too much, don't eat too much. But don't. I had mashed potatoes for dinner. Mm -hmm. Did you find yourself sitting there wishing you had my mashed potatoes? Not at all. Eh, see? That's what I mean. I don't now have to restrict myself from not eating the things I want. I literally don't want it. If I were to eat the oranges, I would want that stuff more, and okay. then I would have to play that game. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Let's see what else I'd ask you, mister. 
Do you ever read the comments on any of these videos? Or I know you read the ones on the blog, but they're mostly nice. Do you ever go on the videos and read the comment section? No. Don't. No. Well, no, I mean, but that's more because I don't like. I don't want to get in that. It's probably best. It's probably best. It is. I shouldn't read either. Well, uh, okay. Leave us a comment if you <laughs> like this video. <laughs> I'll we read won't it. read it. <laughs> I'll read it. Okay, we'll read it on the blog, but not on... Um... Leave us a nice comment, and Babs, you have a shot at redemption. Babs. Babs. That was really hateful. That's, well... Also, remember the guy the other day who said I need to show my hands in the video more and pin my hair back? I think he was talking about jazz hands. And <laughs> he said that also... How are we supposed to know if a carnivore diet works if you can't see my shoulder to hip ratio? It's fine, right? I like it. It's fine. I think it's good. I don't even know what he means. Should they be the same or should one be bigger or smaller? I went and looked in the mirror after that, but... I'm an English major. I don't know. They seem fine. So do you think, is it ever weird for you, the fact that you're married to the meat lady? I mean, I don't know. Do people call me that? <laughs> or is that just something I'm putting on myself? Is it weird for you? Do you have other questions? No. It's probably a little weird for you. No, so it's not weird. But like people, but by now people know. You've been doing this for 10 years. People know. People know to expect that you are not going to eat the hummus at the party. Um, it's always a joke. Like, you want a piece of cake, Kelly? Well, my friends don't joke about that. Well, people do. Just co-workers, family. But I do think that, um, I think that over time, people have really changed their attitude about it, and people have accommodated you more. And people have been mostly very kind, other right. than Babs. I, I think that at first it was a little bit difficult for them to comprehend. But now people have a sense of what it is that you do and don't eat. And I also think, too, 10 years ago, well, 15 years ago, let's start 15 years ago, people had, people didn't take food sensitivity seriously. Mm -hmm. um, people weren't entirely sure, like, what gluten was. No. People weren't entirely sure. I mean, like, it just, they didn't, you know, I remember when somebody told me that I couldn't eat peanuts on an airplane anymore, like, oh, yeah, try and stop me. And, but now, like, obviously, I think the world understands now what a serious issue it is. And I think that dietary restrictions, dietary choices, I think people are more accommodating. The world has somehow gotten a little better along the way. And, and so people, the world treats you a little better than it did or would have 15 years ago. You know, just like... Four or five years ago, when that first Daily Mail article came out. Oh, yeah. If y'all think it's hard to be a carnivore right now. I remember when that came out. I was sitting in a hotel in Boston, I think. And I remembered I was eating breakfast. And it came up. And I was, I was actually shaking. I was trembling. I was so nervous. Because the Daily Mail, it's either going to be... Well, no. <laughs> it wasn't the nicest article. It was basically, hey, look it's at this. It's a tabloid, right? Look at this freak show. It's a tabloid. And I keep thinking, oh, God, this is going to hurt. This is, it did. This is going to hurt. And here comes the merry-go-round of idiots. And, but at the same time, you were in the Daily Mail. And part of that kind of exposure was kind of normalizing yes. what you're doing and making it... Um, at least more approachable to think about. Yes. That was the entire reason. I really wanted what I do and what maybe my, our kids will choose to do. So our kids are low carb, but not zero carb. I wanted it to seem more normal. If nobody ever hears about it and knows it's a thing, then it was forever going to seem crazy. And the way they wrote it, oh my gosh, all the hate mail flooded in. It was... It was a pretty big deal. And soon after, Good Housekeeping did one that was not um, much better. Well, so I think that, I, I do think that a lot of major or mainstream media or whatever feels that they have some obligation to not push you off into the deep end of not eating vegetables anymore. Yeah. 
Um, and I think that um, I think it's just hard for them to to deliver that so advice. outside of the box is, of what yeah. every doctor has been telling them. But it's but getting less so because they're writing about it now, right? It, they're writing so. about it. We're I mean, it's growing to the point now. If you just say keto, everybody's cool with you. You're like, oh, it's keto. Oh, God bless. God bless. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah. I definitely throw out the word keto sometimes, even though those who really know me know that there is a big difference in keto heads and a carnivore. But as yeah. far as if I'm ordering at a restaurant and somebody sees me eating all meat and they say, oh, are you doing keto? Yes. And I do think that the exposure, the all of that media exposure, um, one of the things that really highlighted for me was that people treat dietary choices really i mean it's 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 kind of like a third rail of conversation topics like the, you know you've always heard don't talk about religion and politics yeah also don't talk about what you eat because it just people get really personally offended it's almost like it another re like, religion right right because if you seemingly imply that their personal choice i mean and i get it because i eat mashed potatoes so if somebody came up to me and told me i couldn't have my mashed potatoes i'd be a little bit because you're an addict. I mean, <laughs> sorry. I'm talking to a lot of carnivores right now, and that's what they're thinking. But you're a cute little addict. <laughs> Do you remember when I was pregnant and I would have you sometimes go out and get um, ice cream and eat it so I could watch you like it was ice cream porn? I mean, you kept your clothes on. Yeah. But ice cream porn. So I will admit that even though I don't really have a lot of cravings, Normally, when I was pregnant, I've had three zero-card pregnancies, so he's lived through this. It's a little uncomfortable the first time. Three times. You only did that the first time, and you didn't do that often. Nope. I got over it pretty quickly, but I really wanted ice cream very badly, as many pregnant women do. I must remember the women do. empty pickle jars outside of our stoop because they wouldn't fit in the recycling bin anymore because <sighs> you were eating gallons of pickles. Well. No, that wasn't when you were pregnant, but. Yeah. I wanted gallons of pickles. And I wanted you to eat pickles, and I wanted you to eat ice cream, and I wanted you to eat all of the things I couldn't have because I, I craved out, it. You had a, a enormous thing of Texas Pete. I did want hot sauce. That's true. So I, another thing I get asked is, how do you deal with pregnancy cravings? For me, I needed sauce to kind of cover the taste of meat because even though that normally that's my favorite taste of all, I did not love it when I was pregnant. And I did not love the sight of raw meat, so I would need someone else to cook the meat, or I would go get my These burger were hard patties. Times they were the hard life. times. Um, I, before I got pregnant the first time, I was actually dry drying my meat, raw steaks in the fridge quite a bit. Remember the racks? <laughs> so we went from racks of dried meat in the fridge to then I couldn't even stand to see it, and we ended up even throwing some out because I couldn't even look at it. It was like Jeffrey Dahmer lived in our house. <laughs> It opened the fridge. <laughs> Just raw meat sitting in there on, on racks, drying out till I cooked it. Um, but then I ate a lot of bacon, egg, and sausage for the first trimesters and would make him eat ice cream when I was dying for it. And I, I stuck with the zero card you did. times three. All right, we got to wrap this thing And up. the kids were... It's getting weird. The kids were okay. All right, it's getting weird. Anyway, I wanted you to meet my dear editor and husband. And to hear what it's like to be married to a zero-carb carnivore. And thank you for watching. Are we going to do this again? Yes, we'll do it again. With or without you, I'm not sure. But I think I'm going to start doing no, more meant, videos. Are we going to do this again? Oh, we could do this again. I think I'm also going to do um, some interviews with our kids. Who are quite young, but they know a lot. They're cute. And they're adorable. Like and them. they want to talk. I asked them today, do you want to talk about zero-carb and low-carb and what it's like to have a meat eater as a mom? And they say yes. All right. I think they just want to be famous, though. They do. They Fair want enough. to be carnivore famous. Yeah. Carnivore famous. All right, guys. Bye. Famous. Okay.